Hi, it's me again. As I said in the general presentation of investment, um, we now have four methods to calculate the profitability of investments that we um, have to be taught this semester. And the first one I want to present to you is called the net present value method or capital value method. Now the capital value method <clears throat> I will illustrate by using a simple example in this video. But first of all, I'm going to explain to you uh, what is the value, the capital value, and how do we uh, calculate it. <clears throat> okay, first of all, what we do with the capital value is that we discount all the future transact uh, transactions associated with the investment back to the point at which the investment was made. And then we accumulate this uh, and compare the result to the invested amount. Now, remember in, in the presentation of investments, um, we do this because money loses value over time. So we cannot compare, we cannot just accumulate the future change in income directly with the invested uh, sum uh, at the time where we did the investment. We need to discount them back in time by using the calculation rate or the interest. Okay, so criteria for a profitable in investment using the capital value method is that if the capital value is higher than or equal to zero, um, the, invest in the investment is profitable. So there are four steps we're going to do now. We're going to discount all future transactions associated with the investment back to the point at which we are making the investment, finding the present value of them. Then we accumulate them, we add them together, uh, all the future transactions, so we have the net present value. We compare it to the investment amount, and then we're going to assess if there are other things that the company should take into consideration when making an investment. So remember this uh, profile of an investment. So what we're going to do now is to take all of these future changes in income, the blue parts here, all of them, oops, <laughs> sorry, take them back to the year zero, like that, accumulate them, and then compare to the initial investment. So I have a simple example for you. We're going to do it together in Excel. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'll open Excel, and I advise you to follow the example. Try to do it uh, on your own in your Excel. You can pause the video and then try to follow along as I do the example. So first of all, let's open Excel and open a new sheet. Now I know this Excel that I use is in Danish, but I'm going to use the English expression of what you need to find on your own computer. So this investment investment is just a random thought of investment. It's an investment of a, could be in a machine and the investment sum of this machine is 2.4 million. So first I create an area where I have all my data that I need to use for my calculation. Remember your Excel discipline. So the investment sum let's make room for that is 2.4 million. Now I'm going to write the investment sum as a negative number. The logic behind that is that you are paying for something. It's negative for you at the time of the investment for the company. And I need that negative number later on. I use dot as a thousand separator. Please pay attention to whatever keyboard you have um, and find the right separator for you, not just typing the dot like I do. You might need a comma. I don't know, or, or some space between. So the investment sum is 2.4 million. Um, as you might remember from the first video, we also need a calculation rate. So the minimum required uh, uh, return we want from this investment. And in this case, uh, the calculation rate is 12%. We need a lifetime and financial lifetime in which we want to, to see if this investment can prove to be profitable. And in this case, the lifetime here is four years. After the four years, the company expects to be able to 
sell this uh, investment at a value of 250,000. So the scrap value is 250,000. And then there is a change in income, the blue parts of the investment profile. So the expected change in income here for year one, year two, four, three, and four is going to be the following numbers. So 500 in year one, 500,000, 900 in year two, uh, 1.2 million in year three, and 1 million in, uh, sorry, not 1 million, 750,000 in year four. So now we have all the data that we need. Now we are creating an area in Excel where we can calculate with that data. So we are going to create a table with several uh, columns. And the first column is going to be the year. Your book refers to the as N. And then the second column is going to be the investment. And if there is an a scrap value, the scrap value as well, as well. If there would have been any maintenance costs or something that a uh, cost that the company expects to have uh, um, uh, every year regarding this investment, we could also have added this in this column. Uh, third is the change in income. Third column, sorry. And the last one is the net payments. Now net payments is the sum of the this column and this column, but I'll show you in a minute. So we start at the year where we invest and then of course uh, the following years where we do down to year four when we do the investment. And now we are going to pick up um, the, uh, the data from the data area that we just created. So the investment sum in year zero, and then in year four, the scrap value. Remember that the scrap value can also be negative, but in this case, we expect to be able to sell this, uh, um, this machine. So change in income, year one, and then I'm just going to pull down to pick up the other numbers. And here as a set, Use the sum function in Excel. Let me just remove myself here, the sum function. Remember not to count in the year. I have seen that a lot by students. So remember, it's only this column and this column that you sum. And add them all together. So the next step is we're going to calculate the accumulated value of all present values of these future incomes. And we do that by using a function in Excel. So this is the net present or the present value, sorry, net present value of future income. So when we're using a financial function in Excel, we can do two things. It depends a little about uh, on uh, what the um, uh, what version of uh, Excel you have. But up here, you can see insert function uh, fx. So if you press that, you will get this picture. Now, I obviously did this um, uh, before, but you can here, you can click on financial, financial functions. And then now you have to find the function called NPV. Now it's a little di different in Danish. Um, so, but you should get this picture if you choose the function NPV. So the first one it, it wants to uh, ask for is the rate. So that's the interest rate, the calculation rate. So again, use the data area you have chosen because I see students type in numbers here and do it wrongly. And then they get the wrong, um, the wrong result, of course. And here it's asking for values. And the values that, they, uh, that, the, that it's asking for are the future net payments here, not the investment itself. So from year one and down, that's the values that it wants. And you can already see Excel is satisfied. It has a result for us. So press enter. And we are going to use this now to calculate the capital value. Now 
we calculate the capital value by taking our initial investment and adding our net present values of future income. Now remember, for a investment to be profitable using the capital value method, the capital value has to be higher than or equal to zero. And in this case, 253.56 thousand, meaning we have a profitable investment. We can roughly say that if all of our assumptions here is going to be exactly the way we predict, this is what the profit that we have made from it. In, of course, um, uh, numbers that we can actually compare to one another. This also means that the higher you set the calculation rate, of course, it becomes uh, more difficult for the investment to prove its profitability. So if I would set this investment rate, uh, sorry, calculation rate higher, my capital value would be lower. So there are other things for the company to consider. And one of them is, of course, the assumptions that they set for this calculation. Uh, how um, valid are they? Can they use them or are there any insecurities? We're going to talk more about that in class. So I hope you could follow. Try to see if you can do it on your own uh, computer. Press the pause button if you need to. And I'll see you in class uh, where we are going to dig in deeper in this capital value. See you.